Good morning. Yes, yeah, it's all about uh, violence at this time, and uh, we see the federal government really putting pressure um, on them at this time. Welcome. Well, it's the second trading day um, this week, final week in the first quarter of 2024. Time really runs. You know, 2024 is really moving. You know, really fast. It's business morning uh, right here. Let's get to the top stories um, that set your agenda now. Um, starting the week, we see the naira gained um, against the U.S. dollar. As the NAFEX uh, closed at 1,420 naira to the dollar, appreciating by um, 2 naira, um, 9 kubo from the previous week. Uh, likewise, the NAFEM uh, closing rates appreciated by 23, 23 naira, 45 for about fixed at 1,408 naira um, for a uh, couple. I mean, a relatively calm trading session. Well, we see the central bank did um, issue a circular to the BDCs, informing them that they sold $10,000 to each BDC at a rate of 1,251 naira to the dollar. So markets are expecting uh, more strengthening for the naira um, at this time. Let's get a check on the oil market now. We see uh, the market's on track uh, to gain for a second straight day um, today, after settling up uh, more than a dollar on expectations of tighter supply driven by Russian production cuts and attacks on Russian refineries, we see Brent crude um, rose by 23 cents to $86.98 cents a barrel, while U.S. crude futures climbed um, 28 cents to $82.23 um, uh, a barrel. So we're seeing WTI, that's the U.S. grade there, um, starting to gain more and getting more comfortable above that uh, $80 uh, mark at this time. Let's get a check on other industries. Now, see the Statistics Department of Directorate of Research, um, Statistics and Publications released data for the insurance industry. Uh, that's for the fourth quarter of 2023. The report indicates that the insurance industry sustained its progressive trend of positive market performance at the close of 2023, fourth quarter, recording a milestone growth to close at one. Uh, trillion, represent about 27% growth compared to the 790 um, billion. So we're seeing a big move up there. Um, growth in 2022, that was 790 billion. So 27% up for the insurance um, industry. Total assets, 2.67 trillion naira. We see the capitalization at 851 uh, billion. So we see the business kind of about 61% of all premiums written during the year, while the life segments contributed 38.7%, valued at $388 billion. The market also recorded a retention of about 87% for life business, just about 54% for um, non-life, while the aggregate market average retention stood at 66.7%. All right, to other stories now, see, um, Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce is working to push for accelerated implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade um, Agreement. The Chamber believes that creating a platform for meetings and showcasing locally produced products uh, the continent can tap into the over 1.2 billion market available to it. Take a listen. Networking is a key activity for the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. In fact, I think that's the kernel because really what we are here for is to link business people in Nigeria and the USA. Nigeria needs to maximize on the impact of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, that's the AFCFTA. And so the African Foods and Products Exhibition has been put together to showcase the best of African products from various African countries, not just Nigeria. We're ex expecting exhibitors from West Africa, East Africa, amongst others. Now, we want to see the products that have been put together by these people in Africa and then speak to the world that we are able to measure up with exportation standards. So these are some of the objectives of this, product, of this exhibition. Also, it's giving um, SMEs across the country an opportunity to showcase the best of what they do. We've been seeing various collaborations with African um, organizations across the, the, the country and across the continent. So this is indeed one of the many objectives the Chamber has put together to support SMEs. And now to our first conversation. Well, the global economy took a major hit during the COVID-19 pandemic, leading to about 20 million deaths, a negative global GDP growth rate of 3.4%, and a more than 30-year high unemployment rate of 6.6%. One of the major casualties of the pandemic and global recession was a near collapse of the global travel, hospitality, and tourism industry. International tourist arrivals from 
uh, fell from a record high of about 1.4 billion in 2019. That fell 72% to 406 million in 2020. However, international tourism has recovered, reaching 1.2 billion international arrivals in 2023, and estimated to surpass its pre-pandemic level in 2024. This has been referred to as revenge tourism. Well, joining us now is Obey Ira Okafo, CEO, Edo State Tourism Agency. Joining me right here in the studio, great to have you. Thank you for having me. Like yeah, so uh, quite uh, an impressive you know, return we're seeing for the tourism industry at this time. Talk to me about this revenge tourism you know, that we're seeing at this time, and is it sustainable? Yes. So let me start by giving a quick background on the problem. So nobody could foresee the pandemic occurring. You know, it caused a medical, psychological, and economic crisis. In fact, the last widespread pandemic occurred in 1918, the Spanish flu. So going back, uh, COVID occurred early 20, uh, 2020, I 2020, guess. Right. 2020, yes. And it was devastating. I mean, lives were lost, lifestyle changes were made, well wearing masks. <laughs> we had to get accustomed to using uh, hand sanitizers on our governments all over the world, you know, imposed uh, lockdowns. So people were frustrated. People were, you know, sitting at home doing nothing. Inadvertently, because we were not moving, we had saved up money. So come 2020 for tourism, there was a dip, there was a hit, 2021. But 2022, beginning of 2022, we started to see a recovery. You know, uh, governments were easing the lockdowns, restrictions all over the world. But more importantly, people, Nigerians all over the world, people all over the world were suffering from lockdown fatigue they needed right. to move around. I definitely experienced that. For sure. <laughs> yes, yes. So they started traveling with a vengeance. And that's how we have the term, uh, you know, uh, tourism, you know, vengeance and all. So what happened was that the impact of this caused a global phenomenon. So how did traveling and all revenge tourism, how did it impact the world? If you look at the data from UNWTO, that's the United Nations World Trade Organization. The inter international foreign receipts for 2019 pre-COVID was $1.7 trillion. So COVID took a hit 2020, 2021. But the recovery in 2022, the international uh, travel receipts amounted to just over a trillion dollars. Right. Yes. In 2023, $1.4 trillion. That shows you how much people were traveling. And in 2024, it is estimated to reach $2 trillion. So wow. definitely, there's a comeback in tourism. Quite, quite a revenge uh, uh, comeback, I must say. And definitely, this is also a time where there's a cost of living crisis. <laughs> and we've seen, you know, inflation, ravage consumers. And we're also seeing, you know, central bankers, you know, raising rates and all of that. And I'm wondering, that would definitely be some kind of headwind. You know, to the tourism industry, if I'm not wrong. But it seems the revenge doesn't care. <laughs> and it doesn't care. And, you know, uh, people, people live once, really, and they will find their level, their command of income. You know, life is hard. So at the end of the day, you, you need to take a break. Yes, you need to set your mind off the pressures of economy and also travel. The travel industry is here to stay. The hospitality industry is here to stay, definitely. All right, looking at um, the data now, we're seeing activity, you know, with some of the countries, you know, benefiting from this surge. In 25 years, we've seen the likes of Dubai. You know, they've grown from a desert to become the, a, a top, you know, tourist, you know, destination at this time. You know, talk to me about how, you know, countries like Nigeria, countries yes. in Africa can actually, you know, get to this same level, exporting tourism. Okay. So I guess the question is, what is the impact of tourism right. on the, glo the global GDP? Okay, so in 2022, it was $7.7 .7 trillion. Wow. That amounted to 7.6% of the global GDP. In 2023, it was $9.5 trillion, and that amounted to 9.2% of the global GDP. People travel for different reasons. It could be leisure, it could be business, it could be medical, but people move. That's one of the characteristics of human beings. So this, this impact is is has gone beyond the countries that we're used to. 
so for example, the US, the countries in Europe, the UK, it's now gone across, the impact has gone across most of the countries in the main six, the six, six continents. So for example, six out of the 10 tourism dependent countries are island nations. What are island nations? So you have Belize, you have Jamaica. So what have these countries done differently? They have taken advantage of their sun, sea, and sand tourism. So they have beaches, natural water, they have good weather. So they've in invested heavily in infrastructure, hotels, so you have brand name hotels, in their leisure activities. And that is what has boosted tourism. So the impact can be felt worldwide. Right, and, and looking at this now, we see top leading tourism spots, you know, at this time. Um, and the massive revenue we've brought in, we've seen North America, Europe, Asia, 135.2, um, that's for, for North America. This, these are good numbers. We've seen, you know, countries like Dubai and uh, Madrid, Spain, yes. lovely tourist attractions at yes. this time. And one thing about, you know, most of these tourist um, spots is um, they have this um, history, you know, when it comes to, you know, culture, yes. rich culture and all yes. of that. And Nigeria, we have, we have culture, yes, we do. you know, in Nigeria, <laughs> and uh, those states, you know, for one. Talk to me about how you know, we can harness all of these, um, Nigeria's, you know, culture, you know, Africa's culture, yes. you know, to push tourism even um, bigger. Mm. So history and culture are very attractive factors when it comes to tourism. So if you recall, when Queen Elizabeth was celebrating her platinum jubilee, billions of pounds were spent in England by local and international tourists on accommodation, on food, on souvenirs, you know, well, regarding the, the jubilee. But, um, in Africa, our history is deep and is unique to us. In Egypt, for example, you have the pyramids. So the history behind the pyramids is that the pharaohs were expected to be gods in the afterlife. So in the pyramids, they were buried with materials that they would need. So for example, gold, uh, jewelry, some statues of them. So tourists pay a handsome fee to come to Egypt to look at those pyramids. Coming back to Nigeria, in Edo State, for example, our unique history is a source of competitive advantage to us. Yes, it is. So Edo State did not just begin as Edo State. We started as the Benin Kingdom. Ha. Going from the Benin Kingdom, then we were part of the Midwestern region. Then from the Benin and Delta provinces, they formed Bendel State. Out of Bendel State, they, they cut out Edo State. So for example, did you know that our University of Benin was once referred to as MIT. MIT. Midwest wow. Institute of Technology. Right. <laughs> Not the MIT we know the MIT. No. So, <laughs> so Edo has evolved. So our, our history is peculiar to us. It cannot be replicated by any other person. We also have in Edo State the Benin moat. So it's referred to as uh, one of the, the largest man-made uh, artifacts in West Africa. Yes. And then also, it was built in the 14th century to, as a defense fortification against invaders. So it's also a UNESCO World uh, Tourism Site. So that is unique to us. And what the Edo State Tourism Agency, in collaboration with MOA, MOA is Museum of West African Art, which I will talk about later, in Edo State. So part of our responsibility, amongst others, is restoring the restoration of the moat and all the tourism sites for people to come and see. Right, quite interesting. And, and yeah. definitely, um, if you're trying to sell tourism, you also have to sell that your country is suitable, you know, for tourists, you know, at yeah. this time. And, you know, we've, we've been getting a lot of negative um, you know, outcomes at this time, especially when it comes to security. And I don't know how you can, you know, push tourism, you know, if your country is not seen as you know secure so I'm, i want to believe um there are also talks with security agencies to make sure that nigeria is secure so that when tourists come here you come here and you feel safe Definitely. because that is key yes. to push tourism yes tourists must feel safe to travel out of their usual environment right to come to nigeria or anywhere else so and that is what countries like uh, uae dubai the middle east they've invested heavily in security, yes. So you can see the low climb rates of those areas. Also, they've invested in infrastructure, brand name hotels. We have in Edo State, for example, Protea, Radisson Blue, will soon be ready. 
the, most of the tallest buildings in the world can be found in the Middle East and Asia. Right. So there's a reason why they invested in security and infrastructure to attract people to leave their usual environment and come to them. That is the essence of tourism. Right. So we have to pay attention to the security issues in Nigeria. We also have to expand our scope of infrastructure. Right. And I know you did have a mega concert um, in Benin City that was organized <laughs> um, by your agency. And I'm yeah. sure in December, because I've seen, I've heard from you know, some Uber and boat drivers, they did talk about a lot of just got back. That's people from you know, abroad, diaspora, coming back home to actually have fun. Yeah. How was it, you know, the, the mega concert? And I'm sure yeah. the, the state made a lot of money from that. Yes, I'll try to be as modest as I can. You know, the turnout and the success of the event was, of the mega concert was mind-blowing. So what we did, we flew in some of Nigeria's best artists. So we had Pato Rankin, we had Flavor, we had Goya Mena, we had our very own DJ Sose and other artists. And we invested heavily in the sound and surround. And, you know, so the artists were happy to perform. And also the crowd was wild by the performance and all. But um, that's part of tourism. Music is a love language. Everybody responds to music. Right. And that's what we did. There was uh, free popcorn, free drinks, and free finger foods. But more importantly, we couldn't have achieved it without the help of our corporate sponsors, the biggest of whom was Dangote. So we also had uh, sponsorship from Fidelity Bank, from uh, Intercontinental Distillers Limited, and also MTN. Also, in the, during the concert, we did a raffle draw for people from the public to pick, you know. And the first prize was an all-expense-pay trip to Ivory Coast. That's the picture of the winner there. Right. Second prize, all-expense-pay trip to Ghana, yes. And the third prize was a three-day all-expense-paid uh, holiday in our Pro Chia Hotel, Select a Motor in Benin City. Yes. Quite interesting. Yes. Well, I wish I won something, <laughs> definitely, but yes. yeah. But a week later, <laughs> right. a week later, we had another concert. It was a national jazz concert. Okay. So the Edo State Tourism Agency, in collaboration with Jazz Culture, which is a jazz group consisting of different artists and jazz lovers. So we did a national concert. We had renowned artists like um, Inka Davis. We had uh, Dede himself. We had uh, Sammy Sachs. So it was wonderful. December was a glorious time. People right. came home. So I guess it was a dirty <laughs> December, as they yes. would refer to it, you know, right here. But look, definitely, uh, we're seeing 2024 start off with, you know, rate hikes, you know, as usual. That's in Nigeria here. We're seeing um, the Naira, you know, trying to stabilize a bit, you know, at this time. Yes. Talk to me about what you're seeing, you know, for the tourism industry in 2024 into 2025. Okay. Nigeria is a, is a beautiful place. Nigerians are very interesting people. We always draw attention wherever we go. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. 20 years ago, we had only about eight airports. Now we have 32 airports, five international airports, which are regarded uh, worldwide for global transportation. So I know that Nigeria has invested a lot in infrastructure and you know, somewhat in security, but there's a lot more to be done. There are different sectors that we still need to invest in. For example, rail, they're doing a good job. I know about the Wari Itakbaya train that goes through Edo State, the Lagos Abelkuta train. So all these are mode of transportation for tourists, modes of transportation for tourists. Then uh, aviation industry too right. is doing quite well. We have a number of airlines that fly locally. I mean, Arik, Ebom Air, uh, Green Africa. That's one of my favorites because on time performance. And uh, we have um, air peace as well. And Thankfully, Airpiece has, is going to start flights from Lagos, London, and back. So that will bring our brothers and sisters in diaspora, and also, I guess, the foreign tourists as well. Ebom Air flies to Ghana, so they will also bring the Ghanaian tourists as well. Nigeria is blessed with tourism sites. In Edo State, the, we are developing a cultural district, a three square mile, and then MOWA, Museum of West African Art. That's going to be a center of excellence for archaeology and artwork. Lagos State is progressive, so they have the uh, Badagri Slave Museum. It was a point of no return, point for European merchants uh, dealing in slaves. That's, so that's deep history. We have the Agongun Festival in Kebi State, it's a fish festival. We have the Calabar Carnival, which is an annual carnival every year. Akwaibom, one of my favorite states. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful place. 
So, uh, Ibom has Ibeno Beach, is the longest sand beach in West Africa. Ika Ibene is a raffia city. So, there's a lot of history. It's also a commerce space. So, I know in conclusion that government is committed to diversifying its income away from oil. Tourism is one of the viable means of achieving that. That's the truth. So, we must invest in security. Right. People must feel safe. And we must invest in infrastructure by commodification of tourism. What do I mean by that? We make tourism a product by utilizing, you know, our culture, our tradition, you know, by, you know, leveraging them, and then we make it a commodity to earn profit. What, do, what does that do to us, for us? Development, economic development. It also puts Nigeria on the map, center of the map of global tourism. So Nigeria is, the economy is recovering slowly but surely. Right. Do I believe in the future of tourism and hospitality in Nigeria? Yes, I do. Yes. And, and I, I believe too, because definitely, <laughs> I love, you know, I love tourism money because, you know, it comes in and it stays in. You know, you don't have to worry much about repatriation, you know, when tourism money comes in. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us. That's Mr. Bayi um, Ayre Okafo, CEO of Edo State Tourism um, Agency. It was great having your perspective. Thank you today. for having me, Lady. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, now, so we're going to get a check uh, on the bond market. We observe pockets of mid to long dated maturities with emphasis on the 2031, 2034, 2053 bonds. Uh, bids hovered around the 20.50, 20.65, and the 19.00%. Um, interest on the short end maturities, that's skewed towards the 2026 and the 27, 2027 uh, papers. If we take a look at some of the uh, the markets now, the close uh, we saw um, yesterday, we see the bond market, the fixed income market, not looking uh, so bad um, at this time. And definitely we're going to be talking to um, Chuka and Wachuku. It's decision day um, right here because uh, we know that the MPC, they did uh, start the meeting um, yesterday. Remember the last meeting, we got that massive, uh, massive jumbo hike there, about 400 basis points. We've got predictions for today. Some are saying 150 basis points. Some say 100 uh, and maybe possibility, you know, of a hold because we had a very big one, you know, in the last uh, meeting. So I'm going to be talking to Chuka uh, Nwachiku now, Head Asset and Balance Sheet Management at uh, UBA. Great to have you on the show. Good morning. Morning, Vladi. Yeah, so it's, it's decision day. What are you expecting? Um, well, um, like you mentioned, um, expectations are high. Um, um, I, for one, feel that um, MPC should maintain. Um, the reason being that um, it's just one month after the last uh, um, NPR um, increment by 400 basis points. And, and um, we've seen a drastic uh, improvement. We've seen um, a lot of um, development, positive development, Ever as since that, that last time, um, at the time um, we had about um, uh, the, at the last time at the last, at the last time of last meeting, the naira was trading around the 100 and uh, 1,800 levels. Uh, currently trading around the 1,300, 400 levels. So that's a drastic improvement. I I believe that um, MPC should just give. Um, a, a bit of time, um, probably just allow maybe like a month or two to see how, um, you know, uh, to see further improvement uh, in, 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 the, in the last decision taken. However, uh, market um, pillars is that um, there's going to be, um, if that's all, there's going to be any hike, it'll probably be around the 100 to 150 basis points. Um, I do not think that they will be so aggressive uh, um, as, um, as, as the last time, about 400 basis points. So, I still feel that um, um, it's, 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 it's for, my, for me personally, I feel it's safe to just maintain for now. Maintain. And how would uh, uh, hold stands, how would that impact, you know, the fixed income market? So presently, the fixed income market is, um, is, is, is highly being impacted by part of the decision taken at the last MPC meeting, which obviously has to do with liquidity. Um, uh, for the past uh, three to uh, two to three weeks, the system has been in debit of uh, between uh, 2 to 2.5 trillion. Um, there was a little uh, bit of respite sometime last week uh, where we had to keep on 
inflows that came in about 700 billion. Um, but as of today, um, it's in the repo about, uh, about uh, 45 to 50 billion uh, um, debit. And so that has actually affected the trading on the fixed income market. Um, presently, uh, the market is a bit quiet. Uh, on the TBU side, for example, we saw um, uh, the last auction was on Wednesday last week. Uh, we saw a drop, about 37 basis point drop um, in the one year paper. Um, you know, it dropped to um, 21.12. Um, tomorrow, there's, a, there's, there's an NTB auction as well, and then we, we uh, about 161 billion will be on offer. Uh, we still see about, but, um, it depends on what happens at the MPC meeting today. That we determine. So the market is generally quiet um, due to expectation of the MPC meeting. And so for the bond side, uh, we've seen, like you rightly mentioned, we've seen activities on the shorter end of the curve, the 2025-2026. Um, 2030, um, 31 and 34. Um, these uh, papers are, are, are the next auction as well. So uh, we've seen um, a bit of um, activities, especially um, very sentiment in anticipation of um, what the outcome of MPC meeting would be. And then, of course, you know, um, traders trying to create liquidity in order to um, meet the obligations. Right. Uh, let's get a quick check on the FX uh, market. We did get that circular. Uh, from the CBN that is sold um, to BDCs, $10,000 each at 1,251 Naira um, to the dollar. So is it safe to say uh, we should expect maybe about 1.5% higher, you know, than this level in the coming days? I think what CBN has tried to do, and they've done very well, is to bring confidence back into the system. And that's what has really greatly improved, you know, activity in the FX market. Um, you know, the circulars that have been passed, you know, not only that these circulars are, are being implemented, you know, you know, very well, but also CBN is making sure that, um, you know, the players are also, you know, um, you know, keeping to their own part of the bargain. And so, you know, um, you know, uh, sending this, um, 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 this intervention to the BDC and then, of course, monitoring them and, you know, making sure that, um, you know, they stick to the, 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 the rate. You know, it's something that, you know, that has brought a lot of confidence. And I believe that uh, if this continues, we see rates, you know, even go further than, uh, um, you know, 1,200, you know, levels. So I guess uh, at some point, maybe we should expect sub 1,000 naira to the dollar. What are you seeing? Yeah, um, you know, Hopefully we should, and that I believe that's what CBN is working towards. And again, like you know, the issue um, with the FX is, is not only on the monetary aspect. I keep saying this; it's also the physical aspect out of the address. Um, so you know, um, we we need to be able to produce um, you know uh, more um, crude in order to be also be able to um, you know to be able to achieve our quota in terms of uh, OPEC and of course uh, the uh, oil benchmark as well. And so if we're not producing enough and then we're not able to sell enough, we will not be able to, you know, um, you know, to end the expected, um, you know, foreign exchange that we, we deserve. So All right. what CBN is currently doing is the monetary aspect of it. And um, it, 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 it's working. And then hopefully um, we see better results in, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Fantastic. Hopefully for the very best. Thank you so much, uh, Chukran Wachuku, Head Asset and Balance Sheet uh, Management, UBA. Thank you. All right, so th that was close for uh, most of the markets uh, here, talking about the FX market and the equities market, 0.49%. Um, that was a drop. We're looking out um, for the close uh, after trading uh, today. That's uh, business morning. I hand things over now to the Sunrise Daily Team.